Well, Hoppy and Pat are not here today. They are celebrating their 49th wedding anniversary, but that means I don't have anybody to pick on, so I guess I'll just have to pick on Dempsey instead. <laughs> From Matthew chapter 17, we read the first nine verses. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open our hearts to you that we may hear your message and your words. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Moses had gone up to the mountain to receive the law. And finally, after a while, he came back down from the mountaintop. And his face shone, like it says here, his face shone like the sun. And it scared the people the Hebrew people, it scared them. And so Moses put on a veil, he veiled his face so that they wouldn't be afraid of it. In this particular passage, the same thing happens to Jesus. Jesus becomes, glows with the power of God. Now, I had a lot of time this week. I got bronchitis and um, was, was out this week, but... Um, I had a lot of time to look over this, this text. And, and I think there are a few things that we can take away from here. First of all, this text shows us that Jesus was the, was the completion of the Old Testament. We have represented here in this story today, in, in, in this text, we have represented Moses for the law and Elijah for the prophets. And so you have both of those together. And the people, I mean, and, and Jesus understood what was going on, that, that here they are together. Now, I don't know exactly what they were there talking about. I don't know that they, if they were there to discuss what was going to happen later on. Jesus knew, Luke says, that Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. And so Jesus decides, I'm heading to Jerusalem, and I know what's coming, and maybe this is an attempt just to help him accept his fate that is to come. But it's also a sign that the law and the prophets had been fulfilled by the presence of Christ in the world. All of the Old Testament prophecy, prophesying for the Messiah who would save the people, not just the Hebrew people, but all the people of the world. Here they were, gathered together to assure Christ that this was his time. It was his time. And here they are together. And Peter, James, and John were there with him. And, and Simon Peter, man, you, you read about Simon Peter, and 
you wonder if Jesus just had to shake his head sometimes. Oh, Simon, what are you talking about? How, how inappropriate sometimes Simon was. And he says to Jesus, Lord, it is good to be here. Let me build three dwellings for you. Let me build three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, there was a festival in the fall called Sukkot, which was a fall harvest festival. And during that time, the, the uh, Hebrews were supposed to remember that they had been travelers in a foreign land, and they were to erect a shelter, kind of like a tent. They were to erect a shelter, and they were, they were supposed to be able to lay in that shelter and see three stars above them. I don't know what the significance of the three is, but that was what they were doing. And Peter said, let me build you these booths. And suddenly a cloud came down. Now, in the Bible, Jesus, uh, God is represented by smoke or a cloud. Uh, when he comes to talk to Moses, he comes down the mountain like a cloud. When the, the Israelites are following him out of the land of Egypt, the smoke comes up and they follow him, the smoke representing the presence of God among them. And so... Jesus comes and he sees this and, and suddenly out of the cloud the representation of God out of that cloud there comes a voice this is my son with him I am well pleased remember the last part listen to him and then suddenly James and John and and Peter had fallen on their faces because they were scared, because they knew they were in the presence of the holiness of God, and they fell at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus touches them and says, Don't be afraid. And they look up, and Moses and Elijah are gone. Then they head down the mountain. Now, remember, we've seen here the representation of the law and the prophets and the presence of God. We've seen these things. And now, as they are going down the mountain to go back and join the other disciples who were waiting at the, at the bottom, they, they come down and Jesus is talking to them as they come and he says, Now listen, don't tell anybody about this don't tell anybody uh, about what happened until after the resurrection don't say anything now Jesus in the gospels was always telling telling his disciples don't don't tell don't tell anybody don't tell anybody we call that the messianic secret he, he wanted things kept quiet but it didn't always happen that way. So we have the, the, this, this little vignette of Jesus' encounter with God on the mountain, with the law and the prophets represented. And here we understand that our God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. That God is everywhere, always with us. The majesty of God. They experienced that, the majesty of God on the mountaintop. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bring us to the mountaintop that we may experience the holiness of God. Help us to know that you love us and not to be afraid. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.